Hey, it's Joseph here. It's that time again, the new version for Enscape has landed. Since the last 3.0 update, I really have been enjoying the new UI graphics along with some additional functions. But you are actually here to learn about what is new on the 3.1 version. So I'm actually glad that Enscape was able to sponsor this video for me to tell you all about it. And for you to update your current version of Enscape, you're going to have to go to their website and the download section. So I'll leave that link in the description for your convenience. And after you have updated your Enscape, you will actually be greeted by this splash screen that says Welcome to Enscape 3.1. Nothing actually has changed here. This actually tells you the first steps and the basic navigation functions. So hopefully if you have been following my channel, you're already a bit more than just a basic user. Let's just move on. So you can just close it out or you can just check on this box to not show it again. And the first thing that I wanna mention about Enscape 3.1 version update is the fact that it now implements NVIDIA DLSS. This may sound a bit technical, but this is actually quite a big one. So I must try my best in explaining this. If you're using RTX graphics card, you can now use NVIDIA DLSS. In a simple terms, it is an AI technology performed by your GPU to give you extra resolution. For those of you who are a bit more curious to learn what this darn thing is, NVIDIA actually explains what this is on their webpage. And you can also go to Enscape's blog and my friend Dan Stein also wrote a detailed blog post and explained it much better than I could ever do. I'll leave both of the links in the description for you guys to read all about it. And DLSS is actually short for Deep Learning Super Sampling and it allows your machine to render a low resolution of scene. Then this process will enhance the rendering for a higher resolution. Enscape is currently benefiting from this technology for gaining a better frame rate in a company complex scenes. The difference would be more noticeable on the models that your machine normally struggles with. And this Enscape's example scene is normally fine. Let's go ahead and move over here. And you'll notice that I actually have a counter that is shown on the bottom right hand corner. And with the Enscape 3.1 version, if we go to the general settings under the hardware features, NVIDIA RTX Ray Tracing, and then now NVIDIA DLSS is listed. So if I have that checked, then it means that DLSS is enabled. It is actually checked by default. If I were to uncheck this, and then go back to the Enscape screen. And if we set things at the medium, and as I move around, my VRAM consumption is 67, 37 megabytes, and the frame rate is hovering around 50 FPS. And then if I were to go back to the general settings and enable the DLSS and then go back to the rendering screen. Then you'll see that my VRAM is now consuming about 6495 megabytes and then the frame rate is increased to 65, 64, 66 frame per second. So there's definitely improvement and to draw more difference, I'm gonna up it to ultra and then go to general settings to toggle the DLSS off. And once I do that, the VRAM usage is 7133 megabytes. So it is using that much of memory inside of my graphics card for the rendering the scene. And then the frame rate now has dropped to 42 frames per second. The lower this number is, it is going to introduce more stutter to your scene, is not going to be as smooth. However, if we were to go back to general settings and turn on the NVIDIA DLSS, then you'll see the VRAM is now dropped to 68, 88 megabytes. And then the frame rate is now increased to 60 frames per second, 61. So you can definitely see it is now having to render out more frames, which is introducing more smooth render. And then it is using lesser VRAM, lesser memory on your graphics card. So basically machine is able to perform smoother and also consuming less resources. Therefore, it is able to allocate to different things that it needs to do. The more complex the scene, the more improvement that you are going to notice. 
So try increasing the render quality and resolution than you would normally would and see how it actually handles. And all of this will actually apply to VR as well. So now Enscape will offer you a better experience overall. The next thing that I want to mention is the NVIDIA Denoiser. The scenes that would normally have heavy noises such as dark interior scenes will actually benefit from this quite a bit. This is actually recommended that you use in conjunction with NVIDIA DLSS. And normally in a dark scene like this, there is going to be extra amount of noises as there's not much of a light to calculate from. However, it is not going to denoise meaning getting rid of all the noises, therefore the scene looks a lot smoother. One more thing that I wanted to quickly mention is the fact that now there is a checkbox for the ray trace sun shadows along with the DLSS denoiser. So if we go to the general settings again, there is now a checkbox over here, ray trace sun shadows for still images. And this is going to give you more realistic and better looking shadows in your scene as it leverages Nvidia's ray tracing technology. So you see how the sun is coming in. And then once I go to the general settings, if I have that checked off, you'll see that some of the shadows are kind of softened on the edges. The natural fall off the shadow would be sharp on the point. And then it should be more smooth as it goes further down. And if I turn on the ray trace sun shadows, now it is more sharpened towards the leg and then it falls off as it goes further on. NVIDIA's DLSS, Denoiser, and Ray Trace Sun Shadows settings are all available together under the general settings as I have mentioned. And you'll have to have NVIDIA RTX GPUs in order for you to enjoy all of these functions that I just mentioned. I'm really glad Enscape team is now working closely with the NVIDIA team to make the tools that we use daily even better than what it was before. And the next one that I want to mention is very noticeable one and actually yet not so technical. The Revit users will actually praise as they now find this function. And there are two new buttons added to the Revit Enscape ribbon, Enscape Material Library and Enscape Material Editor. Inside the material library there you can find realistic pre-configured materials. There are almost 250 of them already. And you can easily import those materials into your working project. One of the good examples that I want to show you is actually the ceiling material. If you go to miscellaneous section and then you can find ceiling panels 05. If I click on that one and then import selection and it is going to tell you that the material is importing. And then if I go to the ceiling plans, the ground floor and you'll see that currently has sort of nothing. On the rendering scene, you'll see that the ceiling has sort of the white finish. And then if you were to normally paint, and here I search for ceiling, and then the normal Revit ceiling tile that I apply here as I apply that, and then done. And then if I go to the rendering scene, you'll see that now it has applied, and I'm not sure if that's totally true of what I intended to do. So if I go back to the ceiling plan and then paint the imported material, ceiling again in the search, and then ceiling panels 05, and then apply that over here, and then done. And as Enscape updates the scene, now it looks much better. And typically you wanna see the ceiling grid, so I'm gonna to go to the material section, and then if I search for that ceiling material that I was using, the ceiling panels, and if we go to the appearance section, you'll see that it renders all great. But if I go over here to graphics section, you see there's no pattern that's available. So first let's go ahead and see how big this grid is. So it is 600 millimeters. So I'm gonna go to graphics section and then the pattern and then I'm gonna go find that 600 mil squares. So here's one and then okay. And then see how the texture is aligning. Aligns perfectly, okay. And then I kinda wanna make it into gray so that it doesn't appear as defined. So there it is. So if we go to the Enscape scene, now it has that ceiling that looks much better than what Revit natively offers you. That was quite easy, wasn't it? 
And in addition, we can go to the material editor. A new material editor will pop up. All the materials that was listed under the Revit material editor is now going to show up over here. Actually, one of the biggest limitation in rendering scenes in Revit was actually because of Revit's material window. The material editing process was kind of clunky and Enscape now offers a separate material editor for you to streamline the rendering process. You can now change the material properties easily within Enscape and the overall layout is consistent to other 3D modeling tools like SketchUp. So you will feel right at home as you dive into this. But for example, you can change the tint color. So over here on the drop down, I can change it to something darker, Saddle Brown, maybe something even darker color, Maroon. And if we go to the render scene, you'll see that now the ceiling has changed. And all the changes that you make on the Enscape Material Editor is now synced with the Revit. And the next thing that I want to mention is the panorama gallery and I have been rendering panoramas and sharing them with my clients as they are not just a flat image, it is both intuitive and interactive, ultimately offering better experience and understanding of the space for your clients. So far, the only way to share this experience was via QR code or individual links that you create for your each scene. But with 3.1 version, Enscape offers you panorama gallery feature. So you can manage uploaded panoramas and share multiple panoramas in a single link. I just go on to the Enscape ribbon and then go to manage uploads. And then make sure you just kind of click on this arrow to see the panoramas that you have rendered. And then the ones that you haven't uploaded to your cloud, then it is not going to have that icon. Once you click on that, you'll be able to find this little icon that says upload panorama to cloud. And once you do that, it is going to upload to the cloud. So it is now accessible via link or the QR code. And you can get the QR code by this over here or save the QR code to file or the link address. And then now you can log on to your account. And then once you do that, you'll see that all the uploads now show up on a single folder. And then once you click on this three dotted icon and then you have share options. And here now I have a link that I can share with my client. So copy that and then paste onto your email and then they now can see multiple images with a single link. Therefore, now panorama sharing is quite easier. And the things that I want to mention quickly are the view management improvements. And now you can rename the views inside of Enscape and the change syncs with your favorite 3D modeling software. Quite intuitive stuff. The model that I have used for this video is available on Enscape's website as a model sample. It really is a great model to test things out and a lot of you have asked where I got this model from and actually it is just Enscape's example model. So I give all the credit to the Enscape team who has worked very hard to make an amazing tester sample model. And in the description, there's gonna be a couple more links for you to check out, which is the official release video of Enscape on version 3.1, as well as detailed lists for all the release information. And I'll also leave another link for you to try out Enscape for 14 days. And if you actually have enjoyed this content, please don't forget to like this video and consider subscribing to my channel so you can watch these sort of videos again. Thank you so much for watching as always. I'll see you next time. Bye.